Okay, good day everybody. So I'm going to discuss the in some introductory terms in statistics. So again, what is statistics? So statistics is a branch of mathematics where we observe, we collect, and interpret our data based on the result of our statistical treatment. Now, technically, statistics is just a combination of the definition of descriptive and inferential. So there are two kinds of statistics. One would be descriptive, the other is inferential. So if you're going to search or open any book, uh, all all of the definitions there are correct. No, so what's important or what I'm going what I'm going to do today would be to differentiate one from the other, so that if there would be statements given to you, so you can already differentiate if it would be one or the other. So I'm just going to give you the some terms that would help you better remember this ten. All right. So again, descriptive. Inferential is just the combination of what statistics mean. So what do I mean by that? So for descriptive, from the root word describe, so we are going to describe our data. All right. So we are going to describe our data. What do I mean by that? So we are going to describe our data. So we're going to collect our data and describe it using tables or graphs. All right. So... In the descriptive, some examples are, as I have said, would be tables, graphs, right? And measures of central tendencies or the mean, mean, median, mode. You can also add here the variance, the standard deviation, right? And others, right? So all we need to do here on descriptive is to describe our data. So, for example, uh, the mean of my data would be 70. So, we're just describing. Or another. Another example would be there are 10 male, 5 female. So, you're just describing. Alright? Now, so the difference of descriptive from inferential is that for inferential, you're going to infer. So, what does infer mean? So, we're going to make conclusion. So if we're going to already make conclusions, that would be under inferential statistics. All right? So any statement wherein you're already making a conclusion, that would fall under inferential. So what are the examples of inferential statistics? So that can be hypothesis testing. All right? You can also add here correlation and regression. You can also add ANOVA or what we call ana analysis of variance and others. Alright? So, one example or one statement that I can give you for the inferential would be eating ampalaya can lower blood pressure. So, that's already a conclusion. So, once you eat a, an ampalaya, you're already concluding that it can lower your sugars or your sugar so how can you conclude that it can lower your sugar so there were already tests that was done no and their conclusion was this so again i repeat if you're just going to describe your data that would be descriptive okay but if you're, you have a conclusion then that would be inferential next for a qualitative and quantitative data so it's very easy to differentiate one from the other, quali, quanti. So once we say quali, those are words. Okay? Words. Or we can also say that this would be categorical data. Alright, so what do you mean by categorical data? So once we say qualitative words, for example, I'm going to ask you or... An example would be, you know, if somebody would ask you, what's your name? So you're going to say your name is Paul. And your name is in words or in letters. Or another, what's your favorite color? You're going to say red. 
So if your answer would be words, that would be under qualitative data. All right. So let's say let's say here color. Now for quantitative data, that would be numerical. Okay, numerical data or value. So what do I mean by numerical data? So again, if somebody would ask you, what is your height? You're going to say, I'm 5'6", and 5'6 is in numerical data. Then therefore, that would fall under a quantitative data. All right? So height. So those are just examples. So again, for a qualitative data, that would be words or categorical value. What do I mean by categorical value? There would be categories. Categories can be color or gender, religious affiliations. There are a lot of categories. And for a quantitative data, that would be numerical or numbers. Okay? So the next would be discrete and continuous. So for discrete and continuous, discrete is what we call countable numbers. So both discrete and continuous would be under a quantitative data. Why? It is because both of them are numbers. All right. So if discrete would be countable numbers, see si continuous, no? Continuous is a measurable data. So what I mean? So an example would be number of computer in the laboratory. All right. So if I want to know the number of computers in the laboratory, then therefore I need to count. Right. I need to count. I need to count how many computers are there. So you're counting. Again, another example would be number of cars park in your garage so again you're going to count it so that's countable now for continuous right for continuous it is measurable so what do i mean so an example would be the temperature of the aircon so the temperature for an aircon yes i do know there's a controller for the aircon and you can already determine the temperature there but if you're going to use a thermometer or another apparatus to determine the temperature inside your room it is not actually what's written on the controller maybe it's much higher right so you're going to measure it another again would be height so height is an example of quantitative data which i've written and again it's also a continuous data because your height, you're going to measure your height. You're not going to count it. No? So you're going to measure. So again, I repeat, no, for discrete and continuous, both of them are under quantitative data because they are both numbers. Now the last four are levels of measurement. No? So we have four levels of measurement. So nominal, ordinal, ratio, and in interval sometimes in some books okay sometimes in some books they call it as noir right noir so there is a hierarchy in the levels of measurement and they say that the hierarchy would be the lowest is n and the highest is r right so in some books but yeah so what is nominal ordinal ratio in interval so for nominal and ordinal level of measurement, again, this pertains to your data. So for us to determine if it would be a nominal level of measurement, it's just a categorical value. Alright, so if it would be a categorical value, and as written here on the qualitative variable or data, it's also a categorical data or categorical value, then therefore, nominal is under quality so any any category that you could think of that would be an example of nominal and then quality so once you're going to get your data 
we can already determine if it would be nominal or ordinal if you're asking for a categorical value. Now, so if it says here that nominal is a categorical value, and as I have said, one of the terms that we can easily remember if it would be a quality or quantity would be a categorical value, then therefore, ordinal is also under a qualitative variable, but it is in order. There is an order. So what do I mean by there is an order? An example would be preference. So, sir, order, order, what is order? Isn't it there is the first place, second place, third place, or in a race? So there's an order. The first would be the champion and so on and so forth. So there is an order. But if you're going to observe, the order, first, second, and third, are numbers. Right? First, that would be that would be like this. First, second, third. Right? Now, first, second, third are numbers. Yes, I, I do know that. But that first, second, and third repre represent a person. Represent a person. And there's an order. First goes the first one, and then and so on and so forth. Now, if first, second, third are numbers, then therefore, why is that ordinal fall under a, quantity, fall under a qualitative variable? It is because... If those values represent a person or something, it falls under a qualitative variable. For example, another example can be the student identification ID. The student identification ID is also a qualitative variable because that student identification ID only represents one person. It cannot represent two persons, only one. So, there's an exemption if it would be numbers, right? But, going back to ordinal, again, there is an order, first, second, third, and an, an example of an ordinal level of measurement would be preference. So, what is preference? Preference, so, if there are three items in front of you, let's say, three brands of cell phones, Samsung, Apple, and Oppo, so, if I'm going to ask you what's your favorite or which would you pick among the three, if you pick Apple, for example, then that would be your most preferred. Then, therefore, on the three brands of cell phones in front of you, what you did was you ranked them from first to, to third or you, you ranked them based on your preference. So, an example of ordinal would be preference. All right? Another would be a Likert scale, right? So, what is a Likert scale? A Likert scale normally can be seen in survey questionnaires. Wherein you're asking them if they agree, strongly agree, disagree, strongly disagree, or neutral. So, that's an example also of an ordinal level of measurement. Now, for the last duration interval, they are both under quantitative data. So then, therefore, if they are both under quantitative data, then we are expecting that they are both numbers. Okay, so what's the difference of ratio and interval? So for ratio, zero, the value zero means empty. Now, the value of zero for interval has a meaning, right? What I mean by that? <clears throat> okay, so since they are both numbers, then we're going to use numbers, and what we're going to use would be time, all right, time. So if I'm going to use a stopwatch against the time that you can see in your watch isn't it in a stopwatch that would be looking like this right and in a watch 
that would be like this all right you have your hours or minutes for your stopwatch you can have your your seconds minutes and then hours so a stopwatch is an, is an example of ratio why because for the stopwatch if you can see in your stopwatch is zero zero colon zero zero colon zero zero it means that the race hasn't started yet or your stopwatch hasn't started yet then therefore it is empty now for your watch or our time isn't it this zero colon zero zero doesn't mean that there is an absence in time but it only means that it is 12 midnight all right so that's the difference of ratio and interval okay so we'll just i'm just going to continue the other terms on the next 